Okay, so this is the outlet side of the chamber. The methane will be coming out of the dome on the inside there. Underneath that area there is a dome over a, a tank, a round tank. And the methane will come out of the, the copper pipe at the top there and go over to the cooking appliances. This is the outlet chamber. Today, the level is low because we've been cooking. And so, so the, the fluid in here is not running out because we've used the gas. When the gas is generated in the dome, it actually pushes down the slurry. And this gives it the pressure for the gas to go to the kitchen. If we've been cooking with gas, that means the level has come up. And so this in the outlet chamber will go down. And as over the day, more gas is generated, it will come up. And so later today, it will outflow here. Normally in the design, the uh, composting chambers are here, where I'm standing here. But I need access through here, so I put the composting chambers over there. And then hence had to do a channel to get the fluid over to there. We have the two outlets here, the, the material coming off, the fluid coming off the cow yard, going through this pipe here, and this is the, the slurry coming out of the biodigester going into this one here. There's two pipes going under here, and then we have some more channels here. So there's two chambers here for the slurry to be accumulated in. You fill one chamber, the idea is it composts while you're filling the other chamber. Because I've made concrete chambers because of that location here in actual people space, not in a cow paddock, we've made them of concrete and, ro and, and brick and we have to clean these out more regularly because there's no seepage from here, there's no uh, removal of the moisture into the, the soil. And so uh, we have to empty these more regularly. So one is empty, it got emptied last week, and the other one is in the process of being filled. And this is the, the area for the, the channel for the fluid coming off the cow yard. This fluid is, is uh, quite high in nutrient. There's a lot of urine in here as well because the cow's urinating, and it goes into the reed bed. Now I need to add sawdust to this. So I'll do that now. So I'm going to add the sawdust. Why am I adding the sawdust? Two purposes. One is we're adding carbon, so we're getting more carbon with the high nitrogen content of the slurry. And so this is uh, helping to the decompose and break it down and become uh, compost. But also, when we remove this, it's, too, it's very runny, and so it's hard to wheelbarrow it away. So adding the sawdust makes it a bit thicker consistency. And then uh, we take it away and uh, put it into a pile and uh, compost it with the help of the chickens. This area here is the reed bed and the idea of this is to remove nutrient from or, or reduce the nutrient coming off the cow yard area. So this is where the fluid is coming off the cow yard area, uh, high in uh, small particles of cow manure and, and uh, also high in u urine. Uh, a little bit too high at this moment and we're having a little bit of a disaster actually happening here. If you have a look here we've got this is just a little idea I put here just to leave a little space so I can actually see what the fluid is doing. So just to understand what process is happening here. And as you can see, it's really, really high in nutrient. There's too much nutrient coming through here. Um, I might have to put another reed bed before that or another filtration system before this to try and minimize how much nutrient in here. Uh, I've got several species of plants in here to try and 
eat up or utilize or convert the nutrient into organic matter, hence the reed bed concept. It's struggling because it's such high nutrient in there. Uh, I need a bigger reed bed. I'm feeling that I should have put in a bigger reed bed. What I'm gonna do is get some other plants. This is Cigar Rush. Um, it's not coping very well, as you can see. Some of it is growing, some of it's not. This one here has failed. Uh, the Umbrella Sedge is on the edge of failure. So I'm going to get a more vigorous, higher bog type, high nutrient type plant and, and introduce that into here to see if we can get it to function and minimize the quality, uh, minimize the, the high nutrient side of, of the exit point of this here. In time, I'm intending to channel this water across to the other side of the road here. Uh, by using a concrete spoon drain and then I'll have some more reed bed systems there and once the water's clean then I can have food production systems. I don't have wet areas on the property so much and so I want to utilize or take advantage of this opportunity of this higher moisture content coming off the cow yard. Once I do it properly we'll actually use more water there, wash down a little bit more, be a bit more extravagant with the water use um, until I get this system set up, I, I don't want to be too extravagant on the water. And we'll have some nice water garden type processes happening over here. So here we are in the temporary composting area. Why do I say temporary? I'm learning the process of how to utilise the composted, compostable material coming out of the biodigester. When it comes, it's quite liquid. And so this is where we dump it first. And as you can see, it's spilt over this temporary little uh, barrier that we put up. That's quite moist in there. Uh, it's been there about a week, and it's still quite moist. Once that's solidified a bit more, what will tell us when to move that is when we have another compost pit full down there, and that needs to come up. So what that means then, we've got to move this, this whole uh, series here. So these are different piles. This is the oldest pile. It'll, need, it'll be picked up and taken away and taken down to the, the garden and uh, be ready to go into the garden. It will just pile it up there and use it as we need it. So once that one's gone, this pile can then take up that spot. This pile here where the chickens have really, really scratched and, and flattened, we'll pile that back up again and put it here. And this one here, which has had actually another process put into it, it's actually had a material that's come from chicken, uh, from insect, an insect farm, and so it's high in uh, waste uh, food material, which is pollard or something like that, and it's also got lots of, of uh, insect manure. And so that actually heated up. We had an interesting process happen with that one. Anyhow, that one will move to there, and then we can move that one to there. And so I'm understanding how this is working. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And what I'm intending to do, now I know how this is going to work. I do have a problem here with, with the actual location here. It doesn't work very well because we're coming quite upslope and it's a good 30 odd meters from the compost pit. So I have an area closer down that I will set up this whole system we set up there. Now I know, I've got a good idea of what I need. I'm gonna set up a new process down there. Uh, the other problem we have here is the nut grass. This, uh, this grass here is a nut grass. I really don't want this in my garden. And so what I'm gonna do is have this in a located area that I can get the chickens into each morning. And if you know what a chicken yard looks like, the main, the run yard, there's hardly anything or is no green regrowing in there because the chickens keep eating at it. And so what we're gonna do is centralize it into a place. The chickens come in for about three hours every day before they go out to forage. And they will remove all the, all the uh, any nut grass that will possibly come up in that area as well and also that'll give them the incentive to dig through this because uh, here it's a little bit far away, only probably a quarter to a third of the chickens come up here to scratch. But down there, it'll be, it'll be more concentrated and 
we can get them working for us better.